Hello everybody, it's Chris Hood from Seasonal Concepts. Today I'd like to talk to you about properly pruning a crepe myrtle. If you look around town, you'll see a lot of crepe myrtles that have the big knuckles on the end of the stalks, and they just, they look very unsightly, and a lot of us call it committing crepe murder. Well today I'm going to show you how to properly prune yours so that you're not committing crepe murder. We're at the nursery today, and I pulled a specimen from our stock to give you an example of how to do it properly. Uh, this one's fairly small, but the same, the same will apply to larger ones as it would this one. So even though yours may be a lot larger, the same principles apply. Okay, the first thing you notice is we have a lot of growth all up and down the trunk here. The main thing on a crepe myrtle is you want to cut it back to where you only have four, maybe five main trunks coming out of the ground. Any other parts coming off of it we call suckers, you want to remove those. So you take your clippers, start clipping those little guys off there. We want to get that trunk clean of all these little volunteers coming off of the sides. Okay, now we've got all the main trunks cleaned up. And if you notice, we've got one, two, three, four, five fairly established ones here. And then we've got this guy in the middle here. I'm going to go ahead and take him out because I think he's taken away from the overall look of the plant. So I'm just going to go in here and cut him off at the bottom. That one's a little thick for hand snips. And now we've got it all nice and cleaned up. We've got a good shape to it. Okay, now we're going to go to work on the top. Now as you can see, it's pretty out of shape. It's, it's just kind of going wild everywhere. What I'm going to do is go in and take all these little guys out like this and get all these little suckers off of it so that we have reasonable size limbs coming off of it. We're going to do basically the same thing we did on the main trunks going down the tree. I'm just going to go in here and clean all these up. Okay, we've got all the little suckers taken off up here at the top. I've got some left on here, but I'm going to cut this guy back, so that's not uh, too big an issue. I'll go ahead and take those off. What I see people do a lot is they'll come back in here and they'll just cut them off flat all the way across, way back into these main trunks. So then you just have five sticks sticking up and it's all lopped off across the top like, it, like you gave it a flat top haircut. What you want to do is basically get a rounded shape on top of the tree or shrub. So instead of going in and just cutting them off, we're going to find these main forks at the top of each of our main trunks. So what we're doing is we're starting at the bottom with a large trunk and then we start branching off and getting smaller and smaller to the top and give it a, a good tree form. So what I'll do is like in this situation here, we've got the main trunk here and then we've got these three or four branches coming off here. I'm gonna come up about six, eight, ten inches, maybe even a foot, and cut that guy off. And that one's growing into the middle of the tree, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off completely. This one is too, it's starting to lean back inside. So now we've got a branch with two different branches coming off the top of it. Then I'll go back to these. I'm gonna take these little ones off. We've already got a fork established here. Now, since this one's farther out, I'm gonna cut down a little lower. And we'll go around the tree doing that, going back to the main branches, trim them up a little bit of high, give them random lengths. In any of your main stalks toward the center, you wanna leave those a little taller. So I'm gonna go way up here on this one, kinda of giving it a, a main central leader, even though it is off of one of the sides. We'll cut this one up here. Clean those suckers off of it. And now you have a good looking crepe myrtle. And, and what we've done, although these are mainly, these are all pretty close to the same size. So I'm gonna bring this one down just a little more back to this fork. Just trying to get some basic shape to it. We want our outer edges a little lower and try to get the center a little taller. But what we've done here is given it a little variety over the top and it's not cut straight across and flat top. And what these will do later on 
is they'll grow and they'll branch again and they'll grow and they'll branch again and every year when you trim it back you want to move past those new forks so that it keeps getting fuller if we cut it back flat you'll get those big knuckles that you see on all the ones around town and then you just have four or five big trunks a knuckle and then it just balloons out of the top and just lays over and it never has a good shape to it now cutting them back that way with the knuckles on them it doesn't really hurt the crepe myrtle but it doesn't help it either and it, and it never really takes shape of how a crepe myrtle is supposed to look it's supposed to kind of remind you of the trees on the savanna that you see in those uh, videos about the Serengeti and stuff like that where they have those lone trees sitting out there and they're just coming up like that that's the kind of shape that you want to achieve when you trim a crepe myrtle and if you'll trim them like this maybe trim them every two years you don't need to trim them every year let them get a little growth on them now if you're running into a problem with uh, a crepe myrtle that's too big for the area where you have it planted like next to a house in a bed or something like that you may want to think about picking a different variety of crepe myrtle to go in that spot there are many different varieties and they do grow different sizes so if you've got one that's really big or it's 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 genetically made to grow really big it's going to get really tall and the trunks are going to get really thick and then the only way to keep it down to the size that you want is by lopping it off and making the big knuckles on it so if you want to get the correct shape to the tree you really need to take it out and get a smaller variety and there are lots of different varieties and colors to choose from so the biggest thing is get the one that fits the space that you're trying to use it in well i hope that these tips have helped you to have a better crepe myrtle at your house so the next time you're out trimming remember these little tips and they'll definitely look a lot better and remember don't commit crepe murder i'm chris hood from seasonal concepts thanks for watching